All right, so welcome to 4.2, write and plot real-world linear functions. And that's what most of this uh, unit's about. Apples cost $16 for an eight-pound bag at the local price club. All right, so that sounds like a rate, right? This sounds like something we did before. $16 for an eight-pound bag. What's the cost for apples? Hopefully, we realize that's $2 per pound, right? That's from... But the club has a membership fee of $50. Write and solve an equation to determine how many pounds of apples you can buy for $58. All right, we did this. All right, the rate is your coefficient of your variable. $50, what, you know, your constant is what you started with, and $58 is your total. All right, and it says solve an equation. So we wrote an equation, so now we're solving that equation. 2p equals 8, divide by 2, and it turns out... P, the pounds of apples, is four pounds. Ooh, I'm being very sloppy. Four pounds of apples. That's a little review. Okay, so we're going to be graphing functions in slope-intercept form, but they're going to be real-world versions, and this is what your work's going to look like. And for those who don't have the printout, you're going to draw little sketches like this, you know, and you just... Go to four, six, eight, and so on, like that. All right. So we're going to be writing real world linear functions in slope intercept form, where the rate of change is the slope. All right. So, number one concept of first semester is the slope of the graph is the rate in the equation. So, when we just did that $2 per pound, that's going to be the slope of the graph. Yeah, when you do 50 miles per hour, 50 is your slope. That's what happens. All right, and B is going to be our, our the thing, our constant, right? We just wrote a constant. It was a $50 membership fee. That's your y-intercept. So let's see all that. A 40-foot tree is planted and is growing at a rate of 20 feet per year. Y. Write a linear function using function notation determine the height all right so it's going to be height as a function of years right yesterday it was f of x this is h of y that's height as a function of years right and the rate it's growing is 20 feet per year and it started at 40 feet right what's missing from the ones that we did before there's no total what's going to happen is you're going to graph them there's no one total this is a tree, and we're going to draw a graph of how it's growing in a second. All right, so let's complete the table. You're going to need this, right? And if you don't have the printout, you write. It's not that hard. You do this, right? And then you write years and height. And notice this Y is where the input is, right? That's, that's the, normally where X goes, right? And the output's on the bottom. All right, so when Y is 0... The height is 40. That's our y-intercept, 0, 40. When y is 1, 20 times 1 is 20. The tree will be 60 feet tall. I believe it's feet, right? Feet per year. When it's 2 years old, 40 plus 40, it'll be 80 feet tall. 3, right? And if you haven't caught on, I'm evaluating the function right above us like this, right? h of 3 equals 20 times 3 plus 40 is 100. Right, and then h of 4 is 20 times 4 plus 40, or uh, should be 120, right? Right, they follow a pattern just like functions always do, right? So, let's see, we're going to graph that, right? Okay, so there's what we just did. That's you don't have to copy that, we you just hopefully did that, All right? So, now we're going to use our completed table to plot a graph. All right, so if you're drawing a sketch of this, you're going to put years on the bottom and height on the side here. I'm going to put little arrows. You don't need, don't start making all these grids if you don't have the printout. You don't need to do that. What you do need to do is go 0, 2, 4, uh, 6, and so on. 8, like that. Or better yet, or better yet, don't do this. Don't copy what we did. Look what we have here. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And then on this side, but dude, you know, I'm going to 
So that must be 20, right? Because halfway to 40. This is 40. There must be 60 next, then 80, then 100, then 120, and so on. Okay, so let's graph these. All right, so the y-intercept is 0, 40. Uh, in one year, at one year, it's 60, right? So it goes there. And in two years, it's 80. In three years, it's 100. So let me just do this both places so people can see both versions. And in three years, it's what? 100. And in four years, it is 120. And right, this tree is growing continuously. This is a continuous function, not just a bunch of points. So we're going to draw a line through it like that. And we're going to put an arrow in one end, a ray, to show you that we are going to assume this tree is going to grow forever, right? Eventually it may die, but trees grow a long time, way more than a few years. And that's what a real-world graph of a linear function looks like. And this is it written in function notation, right? That's, we're just going to do a bunch of examples of that over and over again. All right, so let's look at this one. Lou has driven 100 miles in two hours already. This was one of the harder ones we did uh, earlier in the year. 100 miles in two hours. So when he was going 100 miles in two hours, how fast was he going? 50 miles per hour. Well, that's going to be the slope of our graph. It is. And assuming he continues at the same rate, write a linear function using function notation. Complete the table and plot a graph to describe his total distance. All right, so we're going to use so miles, it, the number of miles he went as a function. So let's, you know, you copy this t-table, and you have miles as a function of hours. It's miles per hour now, right? Last one was what? Height as a function of years. And they're going 50 miles per hour. The rate goes there. And the y-intercept, remember, it is 100 here because they already went 100 miles. All right, so our y-intercept is going to be 0, 100. Now let's fill this in. So m of, you know, you can do this in your head, but m of 0 will be 100. That's the y-intercept. m of 1 should be 150, right? m of 2, miles as a function of 2 hours, should be 200. And so on, like that. Again, you can skip the M of if you want, but so here 1 goes with 150, 2 goes with 200, 3 goes with 250, so what, that's 250s up here, and 300 is off the graph. So how do we show all that? All right, we're going to draw a ray starting at our y-intercept, that's where the whole thing started, and that's a graph of this linear function. Now understand that that slope right there looks like two, but it's not. Because each box here is worth 25. That's a slope of 50. The rise is 50 and the run is one. The slope is right there every time. All right, so let's look at this one. So, a candle starts at a height of 13 inches and burns down at a rate of three inches per hour. All right, so, it says the height as a function of time, h of t, and it burns down. So the slope or the rate is negative 3, right? The coefficient there is negative. We've talked about that. The y-intercept is where we started at 13. So this is in slope-intercept form. Earlier in the year, some of you wanted to write this as 13 minus 3t, and I discouraged you. This is why. Because it's going to be in slope-intercept form. All right, so let's evaluate this. h of 0 is 13. That's our y-intercept. Each box here is worth 1 this time. All right, so that's 13 where we're starting. And, and again, if you're sketching this, don't start making all these little grids. Just make, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then make you know, 1, 2, 3, 4. Do always copy my thing over here. But you don't need every point. I'm making a standard grid so I can do a whole bunch of different problems. Since you are just doing the one, you can be more specific and not include all these, right, this extra stuff here that you don't need. Okay, so h of 1 
negative 3 plus 13 is 10, right? h of 2, negative 6 plus 13 is 7, h of 3, negative 9 plus 13 is 4, right? h of 4, it follows a pattern, negative is 1. Now h of 5, we'll talk about, it says h of 5 is negative 2. Uh-oh. All right, so let's see that. So we have 13, and then at 1, we go at 10, and then 2, we're at 7, and 3, we're at 4, and 4 is at 1. All right, and then let's, let's just draw that with our arrow at the end, okay? Now, let's talk about candles, right? This is real-world linear functions. This is a continuous linear function that we've written here in graphed. And what would happen to the candle at hour five, all right? It says negative two, right? With the height, so say we set the candle on a table. Would the candle, once it gets to five hours, burn through the table and start growing down two inches? Because that's what negative two says. It went through the table and no, it makes no sense. So when we apply linear functions, to the real world, we have to use our common sense. So you can put an arrow there, but what you don't do is go down here, right? You, the candle can't burn down there. So you can draw an arrow up on the graph, but truthfully, more accurately, what would be here is that you stop it when you get to zero, okay? You just stop it there with no arrow because the candle will not burn through the table. All right. So the input x is called the independent variable. The output y is called the dependent variable, All right? The y depends on the x. So let's see this. The county fair costs $2 per ride and $8 to get in. Write a linear function and identify the independent and dependent variables when finding the cost per, ride, per number of rides. All right, so we have the cost as a function of rides and it's two dollars per ride plus eight all right so the right there will always be the independent variable and it's always the input independent that's a nice little shortcut independent in input both men start with i n if i only could say it now this c is the dependent variable and let's sort of understand what depends means or dependent right? The cost you pay for this fare depends on how many rides you go on, all right? Whether you go on a ride doesn't depend on the cost, you know, in this case, right? More rides you go on, in this case, the more you pay. So the cost depends on the ride. So R is the input. When you graph these, right, R would be down here, C would be here. You always put the input and the independent variable down here, and the dependent or the output always goes up there. Always. Okay. A merchant at a farmer's market charges customers based on how good a friend they are. So friends, he hopefully charges less, and he charges tourists pay the most. Can we write a linear function for this situation? And hopefully you're saying, what? No, <laughs> all right? And why can't we write a linear function? Because the price doesn't depend on how much people buy. It depends on some thing called friendship, okay? We can't graph friendship, really, okay? This is not, the cost is not a function of the number of apples you buy there, for instance, okay? So when you're writing a function, there is a dependence that is in the relationship. All right, so I just said this notes, the input always goes down here. So we have, right, so R, so I'm asking you to make a sketch or copy this, and, and I want you to put R for rides here. That's where, that's the input. That always goes there, and cost, and, and dollars always goes there. And so we're gonna fill this in, right? It's the same one as the last screen. $2 per ride, $8 to get in. So no rides, you pay $8. One ride, you pay 10, and then 12, and then 14, and then 16. Okay, and so then we're gonna graph that. And so we're gonna pay 0, 8, 
then one goes with 10. Now let's understand, each box is worth four here. So 10 is halfway between eight and 12. Two goes with 12. Three goes with 14, halfway between 12 and 16. And four goes with 16. All right, and we're gonna assume you could go on rides forever that this is a continuous function and goes like that, okay. Then you take or pay for half a ride. Now, I just said we're going to assume this is a continuous function, but it isn't really. Can you go on half a ride, a third of a ride? No. Really, you can't, right? When you have, I drew that line, I was saying you could go on a third of a ride, a fourth of a ride. So this really isn't continuous. And you'll deal more with this in high school. We're going to just draw a line through it and realize, though, really, this is discrete. So no this is discrete in reality okay and I already answered this is fun so in real I drew it as continuous but in reality it's discrete because you can't go on half a ride a third of a ride right the, the guy who operates the ride isn't going to do that so this is saying what I just said even if they're a discrete function with uh, distinct points like that, we're going to draw them as a continuous line. Okay, so let's understand this. The county fair costs $2 per ride and $8 again. Find the domain and range of the discrete function. So, right, so this is the domain, right, because this is the input. The input is also always the domain. This is the range. And so the domain here is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Four. Now, it doesn't end there. We're going to assume that you can keep going on rides forever, so you just say dot, 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 right? And this is the range. I really should label this. This is the domain, and this is the range, right? right? There's no way you can go to this fair and spend $9 unless you buy something that's a $9, $1 there, like a treat, right? Because they're not going to let you go on half a ride. Right? So in, we drew it as continuous, but in reality, it's a discrete function. And so the domain is not all real numbers. The range is not all real numbers. It's just those. Oh, and this one should have dot, dot, dot as well. A little detail. All right. A plumber costs $75 for showing up and $25 per hour. That's a little low, but that's what they do. They charge you for just showing up. All fractions of an hour are charged for the full hour. Right. So if he works... A third of an hour, he gets paid for a whole hour. Write a linear function using function notation. Complete the table and plot the points to describe the total cost in dollars. All right, so the what he charges per hour is $25 per hour plus the $75 for showing up. And if we evaluate this function, I'm not going to write the C of zero and all that. So we have 0, 0.75, then 100, then 125, 150, 175 right so we start at 0 0.75 and we're going up 25 every time okay now it's a discrete function because he's not going to let charge you for half of hour every time it's a half hour he's going to charge you for a full hour so in reality it's a discrete function right but we're still going to draw this Okay. All right. So the domain, all right, is now that again, you have to realize this thing could take more than four hours. Those were sample points. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, dot, 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 because he's only going to charge for full hours. And then the cost, therefore, right, he's either going to charge you 75, 100, 125, and you really only need three points. You need three or more of the pattern. This is true, not just today. You need three or more of the pattern, then you can write the dot, dot, dot to show the pattern forever. But this was, a dis in reality, a discrete function. Number 10, amusement park charges a flat rate of $28 for unlimited rides. That's the wristband when you go there, right? So in this case, they're playing a flat rate of $28. Write a linear function using function notation, complete the table, Plot a graph to find the cost per ride. Let's see. So 
if you go on zero rides, you pay 28, right? And if you, and the, we're going to assume the entrance fee is included. One ride is 28. So they're all 28, right? So let's graph that. There's 28, halfway between 24, right? So 0 is 28, 1 is 28, 2 is 20, right? It's 28 forever. And truthfully, if you, it could go on half a ride here. It'd still be 28, right? So we're just going to draw a horizontal line. All right, the term flat rate, if you've ever heard that. That's where it comes from, that picture. It's a flat line. Right? When you buy the wristband, that's the graph of you buying the wristband and paying $28. You go and buy that wristband and go on one ride. You pay $28 for that ride. And assuming it's not your money, your parents are mad at you now. Go on more rides <laughs> if you're going to buy the wristband. All right. All right. So assuming this is discrete because you can't really go on half a ride, what are the domain and range? Well, the domain right is zero one two three dot 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 and the range though is one number 28 all right we assume you got about your you bought it already so there's no zero here the range is 28. tank sprung a leak in the water level that started to drop drop ooh, drop the water level dropped from 18 inches at a rate of eight inches every two hours so eight inches every two hours how fast is that that's four inches per hour but it's going down so the height here of the water is a function of time it's going down oops four inches every hour and it started where at 18 that's our linear function it, starts at 0 18 then negative 4 times 1 is 14 then down goes down 4 more at 10 then it's at 6 and then it's at 2 so 0 18 and 1 is at 14 2 is at 10 and 3 is at 6 and 4 is at 2 all right and now just like with a candle, don't draw an arrow down here because the water runs out, right? When the water is all leaked out of the tank, you just stay at zero, right? You don't then start gushing water below wherever the tank is. All right, so we get down. We can just draw it when we get to zero. Let's stop right there. Now, this is continuous, right? You can have, uh, you could have in three and a half hours a height of the tank. This is a continuous function, just going down.